Welcome to our evening sermon series, Looking at the Lord's Prayer. I will be reading Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Please turn to the passage in your Bibles or open it up on an electronic device. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Here ends the reading. Part of being a parent is a kind of constant loosening of the reins, as that tiny baby that was completely dependent on you becomes a preschooler shouting, me do, me do, and goes off to school for the first time and becomes a moody teenager and, and finally at some point uh, leaves home. Growing up is, is a move from total dependence to growing independence. We're seeing that with uh, the oldest of our children at the moment. She's got to the age where she keeps coming up and saying, um, Dad, when am I old enough that I can walk to school myself? When can I go into town and go shopping myself? A couple of summers ago, we, we went to France and uh, she walked to the shop herself in a little village to uh, pick up a pair of shop and, and croissants. And we were absolutely terrified and kept looking around the corner to make sure she was okay. But she loved it. It was a, a moment of independence. Growing up is that move from, from dependence to independence. And we see in, in Jesus that growing up as a Christian is a move completely the other way. It is a move from, from independence to recognising how dependent we are on God for all things. We're going through a series at the moment looking at the Lord's Prayer. We've looked at the first three triplets and we now come to the, the second three triplets where the focus is on coming to our Father in Heaven as our Saviour. And we're looking particularly tonight at uh, that one line, give us today our daily bread. And what is it we're, we're praying as we pray that? Give us today our daily bread. We're, here's the, the first thing for us to consider. We, we depend on God for daily bread. What are, we, what are we praying when we, we pray for, for daily bread? Actually, that word daily is quite hard to know exactly what's meant by it. it. It literally is the idea of for this coming day. So it could just be for today, but it could also refer for the coming days after today. And what about that idea of, of bread? Well, it seems there's at least two ways for us to think about that. It's referring um, to our physical needs. It's hard not to think of uh, the story in the Old Testament in Exodus where God provides quite literally with bread for them. Perhaps you remember the story. Uh, God's rescued his people incredibly out of, uh, out of Egypt. Uh, they're in the wilderness. They're in the desert and they start grumbling. And here's what God does for them. Exodus 16 verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day day by day what did God do for his people he he literally rained down bread manna from heaven and gave them what they needed for that day I wonder what it is you you most need at the moment it's a time of all sorts of uncertainty uh, perhaps there's uncertainty around your your work situation at the moment and that's causing you all sorts of concerns perhaps your need is just for companionship I'm going to Pause a few times in the sermon and just get to give you the chance to um, to pray and to consider uh, what it is to pray. Um, give us today our daily bread. So I'm going to pause just for a few seconds for you to bring before God. What are, what are your physical needs? What are the things you, you, you depend on him for? So just a, a moment's quiet. As we um, pray for uh, for daily bread, we're, we're praying for our physical needs, but, but we're praying too for our, our spiritual needs. Um, Jesus picks up um, the idea of, of bread in um, in John chapter 6. Um, you may want to uh, turn this up later if you want to look at this a bit further. Uh, in John 6, Jesus 
says these words, John 6 and, uh, and verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. See, Jesus is, is referring back again to the story in Exodus where, uh, where God there provided physical bread to sustain and nourish his people. Jesus is saying, uh, now, uh, here's what sustains and nourishes you spiritually. It is my body. And in particular, uh, his body crucified for us. It's Jesus' death that sustains and nourishes us, that gives us what we need day by day. What might it look like to, to pray, give us our daily bread as we think of Jesus giving us our, meeting our spiritual needs? It's to pray that God will remind us each day of, uh, it's through his death that we're forgiven, brought into the family, loved with a never-ending, never giving up, forever love, chosen as one of his people. Let me pause again and give us a chance to pray that God would sustain us as we hold on to Jesus being our bread, the one who sustains and nourishes us. As we come to him, he gives us deep rest. So just a moment to, to pause and pray again in the quiet. Well, here's the last thing to think of as we think about what it is to depend on God for uh, for daily bread. Notice uh, Jesus says bread. Uh, he doesn't say uh, cake or, or, or any great delicacy. Augustine says this, he, by Jesus saying, uh, pray for your daily bread, he reminds us to pray for necessities, not luxuries. That the first half of the Lord's Prayer is, has shown us that, that it, it is in God that we find all that we need. True happiness and joy and contentment and, and all the wealth and riches we could ever long for. So don't crave after luxuries that we don't need, but ask God for the necessities that you do need. Augustine uh, points to, to Proverbs 30 verse 8 where it says, uh, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but bread for today. Neither poverty that I might resent you or riches that I might forget you, but rather the necessities I need for today. So uh, depend on God for daily bread. Uh, here's the second thing, depend on God today. Then if you've had this experience, I've had it several times during lockdown, when you, you wake up and your mind goes into overdrive of all the things that are coming up that day, and very easy for your thoughts to overrun you, and anxiety and weariness to kick in before the days even began jesus says depend on god today start each day depending on him come to him with those those things that lay on your heart those things that you need for today make that a daily expression of your need of god Calvin also says that, that by reminding us to, to pray daily, to depend on God daily, it, it, it bridles the uncontrolled desires for fleeting things. We're not to run ahead of ourselves and, and ask after all those things we'll need for next week and the week after and uh, the month to come and the year to come, just for today. Give us today what we need. It, it bridles our desires that we might not run after more than we need. But we depend this day on God. So depend on God for, for daily bread. Depend on God today. And, and here's the last thing. Depend on your generous father. Depend on your generous father. One of the, the great tactics of the enemy is to try and convince you that your father's stingy and holding back good things from you. Just um, if you've got a Bible there, look over to um, Matthew chapter 7, just a chapter after uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, and look down at, uh, at verse 7. 
This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks receives, the one who seeks receives. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Even the most average of dads wouldn't even think of giving a stone to their son in place of bread, or a snake in, in place of a fish. Even mediocre fathers will meet their children's needs. And Jesus says, how much more will your perfect Father in heaven give you those things, not always that you want, but those things that you most need? There is no stinginess in God, no holding back, but he loves to pour out blessings upon us. You might want to think about doing something like starting a, a, a prayer diary and writing down those things that you're asking of God and look back on it in, in the future and you'll see again and again God's goodness and kindness, his abundance to you. Depend on your generous father, knowing that he loves to give good gifts to you, those gifts that you most need. So depend on God for daily bread. Depend on God today. And depend on your generous father, knowing there's no stinginess in him, but that he loves to pour out blessings on you. Let's, um, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Give us those physical things that we need for today. We place them in your hands, depending on you. Lord Jesus, would you uh, sustain and nourish us with your death today and in the coming days. And would you help us to remember that we come to a generous father who loves to give good gifts to his children. Help us to grow in dependence to you and run away from that, that independent attitude that we find so often in us. Help us to depend on you, knowing how good and generous and kind you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.